Good afternoon, I am Andrew Heaney, and sadly my brother couldn't join me for this episode. But uh, today, I'd like to talk about every single Marvel movie that has been released. No, I don't just mean movies made by Marvel Studios, even though every single one of them will be on that. I mean every single Marvel movie that I have seen myself have strong thoughts on that have come out after the year 2000. So why am I excluding films like Howard the Duck? Well, it's because I haven't seen them. <laughs> but for real, I actually have not seen a handful of Marvel movies, so I'm going to limit what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to be talking about every film made by Marvel Studios, so that means every single film from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, from Iron Man to Spider-Man Far From Home. I'm also going to throw in Punisher Warzone, because I want to talk about it, as well as the two Ghost Rider movies. Even though the first one's not made by Marvel Studios, I want to talk about it anyway. The second one is just every X-Men movie, every Fantastic Four movie, and every Spider-Man movie, and I'm going to throw in Venom and Into the Spider-Verse in there as well. I am not going to be talking about anything else. I'll briefly share my thoughts on the Blade movies. They're fine. Or at least the first two are. I like, I kind of like the second one a little bit more than the first one. The, uh, Blade is okay, I'd give it like a low six. The second one, a six as well. Blade Trinity I've only seen once and I fucking hated it, even though it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. I'd give that one like a four out of ten, I don't know. Four out of ten is my letterbox rating, but it's close to a three. Anyway, without further ado, let's talk about every single Marvel movie that fits under that criteria. So X-Men came out in 2000, directed by... I won't name his name because he's a fucking pedo, but uh, X-Men is a pretty good movie. I don't think it's great. It's actually closer to decent than it is great. It's got horrible art direction. It's really dated. Some of the dialogue is so bad. Uh, play, play my favorite clip of the movie. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? Same thing that happens to everything else. Anyway, but the best part about this film, I think, is the script and the fact that it's really fucking cool. I don't, I, I said this before, I don't like the art direction. The cinematography is fine, the casting is great. Hugh Jackman as the Wolverine, uh, Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart as as Professor X is fantastic, and Sir Ian McKellen as Magneto is fantastic casting. That's all great casting. Some of the others are actually pretty good. I like uh, Halle Berry as Storm, even though she doesn't have too much to shine. Ray Park as one of the least cool but most memorable villains in here, Toad. Uh, there's not much I can say. I give it a 7 out of 10, much closer to a 6 than a 8. In fact, I there is a possibility this could go down to a 6 in the future. But I recommend it. It's, uh, it's dated, but it's still pretty good. 2002, Spider-Man. We're directed by Sam Raimi, who I actually really like as a director. I recently saw the Evil Dead movies, and those are great. Even the weakest one, in my opinion, Army of Darkness, is a great film, in my opinion. But yeah, so Sam Raimi's direction, his fingerprints are all over this movie, and I love it. But like, like the first X-Men, it's really dated, it's really corny, and there's some jokes that would not fly today. That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? Yeah. Yikes. I mean, joking aside, I actually do like that scene where um, Spider-Man, where, where Spider-Man's name is first dropped by Bruce Campbell, of all people. These will be paid to the terrifying, the deadly, the amazing Spider-Man! But yeah, so the original Spider-Man stars Tobey Maguire, Kirsten Dunst, Willem Dafoe, who I love. Go see The Lighthouse, by the way. Please, I'm begging you. The Lighthouse is on digital war right now. It got completely snubbed by the Oscars except for cinematography. So please go see The Lighthouse. It's my favorite film of 2019. Daddy! Let Neptune strike ye dead, Winslow! Oh! All right, have it your way. 
and one of my favorites of the decade, in the top five. But anyway, back to Spider-Man. I like Spider-Man, it's a good movie, and I saw it when I was pretty young. I didn't see it when it first came out, I saw it maybe a year or so later, but I like it. It's a really solid movie. Um, Tobey Maguire is a great Spider-Man, even though he's kind of a wimp. The classic line, with great power comes great responsibility, I love that line as usual. Everybody else does, so I like that line. Uh, Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin is amazing. He is easily the best part of the movie, in my opinion. He is so hammy, and I love it. Uh, the film is really dated, so that's probably my biggest problem. I mentioned this before, the homophobia is a little questionable. It's not horrible, it won't, it doesn't affect my rating at all, but it's worth noting. Uh, otherwise, I really like this movie. I'm giving it a solid 7 out of 10. Next is X-Men 2, uh, 2003, or X2. This is the only one I'm going to be talking about in here, because there were a couple other Marvel movies that came out this year that I'm not going to talk about, because A, I haven't seen them, B, I don't want to talk about them. So I'll just talk about X-Men 2 instead. It's really good. Uh, the opening scene with the attack on the president is incredible. It's directed by the same pedophile who directed the first movie. Needless to say, the script is actually kind of better than the first one. It's not vastly better than the first one. It's got the same problems. It's got a pretty, pretty bad art direction in general and really poor usage of the characters. Like, Rogue and Cyclops barely have any chance to shine. Uh, of course, Jean Grey dies in the end. You obviously know she doesn't actually die because of the ending. But I, speaking of which, I actually do like the ending. The climax is a little bit more than they usually get with these superhero movies at this point. It's usually not like Spider-Man fighting someone on a rooftop or something like that. But I like this movie 7 out of 10. So next is Spider-Man 2. Okay, this... Spoilers, obviously. This breaks my 7 out of 10 score because... My 7 out of 10... This breaks my 7 out of 10... My... This breaks my 7 out of 10 streak because this is a great movie. Spider-Man 2 is vastly better than the first. The action scenes are actually amazing. And all the characters, including... I'm blanking on the name of... I had it in my mind, but I'm totally blanking on the, guy, the name of the guy who played Dr. Octopus, but he's great. Uh, Tobey Maguire is much better in this film. He's, his character, both Spider-Man and Peter Parker, are vastly likable. They also used a little bit more of, in my opinion, the best casting any comic book character ever, J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah James. Spider-Man 2 is a really, really great movie, and I give it a strong 8 out of 10. Moving on... The 2005 Fantastic Four. Yeah, this movie sucks. I'll give credit. I would not give credit if I hadn't seen the newer one, but this film at least has a personality and has some unintentionally funny moments. Other than that, this movie is terrible. This film is just boring. They, the characters are all unlikable. They do nothing for a good chunk of the movie. The villain, Doctor Doom, is a joke. And, in fact, this whole movie's a dumb joke, and they don't take their powers very seriously, which may be nitpicking in general, but this movie has a terrible script, terrible directing from Tim Story, uh, terrible casting, except Chris Evans as a Human Torch, a really bad CGI, even for the time. The characters, the protagonists, are all very unlikable, as I said, and they kill us half the damage they do. Overall, not a good movie. I don't want to talk about it anymore. 3 out of 10. Next is X-Men 3 The Last Stand, aka just The Last Stand. Which was, for a lot of people, their last stand for watching this movie. Okay. This movie sucks. It's not as bad as Fantastic Four or some other Marvel movies. In fact, it's not even the worst of this series. One of my biggest praises of the movie is that shit at least goes down in this movie. That things actually happen, there are stakes to this movie. The problem is the rest of the movie really doesn't work. It's got probably the worst directing out of all but maybe one exception of the X-Men movies. And overall, it's just bad. Like, it, they, the, the script really dropped the ball on this movie. Uh, overall, I give it like a 4 out of 10, closer to a 3 than a 5. But it would be a lower score if shit didn't go down in this movie and it was boring. 
Thankfully, it's not bored. Next is 2007. There are three movies that came out this year that I can talk about. I'm going to talk about Spider-Man 3 first, even though I don't think that was the first one to come out. I don't think it's that bad. Is it good? Uh, no. It's way too long. And there's way too much shit going on in this movie. Honestly. So I honestly don't know what to say about this movie that a lot of people have. The scene with uh, Harry, I'm sorry, the scene with Harry Osborn is pretty mediocre. It's not bad, but it's not great. Um, the stuff with Sandman is awesome. The stuff with Venom is trash. Topher Grace's Venom is terrible. Like Tom Hardy, I'll talk about him eventually. Tom Hardy as Venom is great, even though the, I didn't think the movie was. But I'll get to that eventually. Topher Grace's Venom does not work. And the character does not work. And Spider-Man in this movie is a lot less likable. And I kind of enjoyed, ironically at least, the scene where Peter's dancing in the street, acting all cool when he's clearly not. I like that scene, ironically. There's a lot of ironic enjoyment in this movie, but there's also a decent amount of genuine enjoyment. So I'm going to be a little generous to this movie and give it a 5 out of 10. Next up is Ghost Rider. Ugh. You know, when you see a movie with Nicolas Cage, usually you don't expect a good film. Especially if the trailer looks like it did, but this movie's pretty just boring and bad. Like, it's really bland. It's not that... It's not... I don't know whose demographic this is for because this movie is pretty violent for its rating. It's not very exciting either. It's got a pretty mediocre script, uh, terrible directing. Nicolas Cage is hamming it up, so I do like that. Cinematography is pretty bad, as, you, um, as usual for these bad Marvel movies. The music is pretty bad. I like Sam Elliott. Uh, who doesn't? But otherwise, I didn't like this movie at all. 3 out of 10. Next is Fantastic Four 2, Rise of More Money, I guess. This is this movie is terrible. It's it's so bad. It's worse than the other one. This movie's really unfunny. It's really uncool. The only cool thing about it is Lawrence Fishburne as the Silver Surfer. Like some of the things he does are actually kind of cool. But ugh, bad movie, bad. Moving on to 2008, uh, we got Iron Man. <laughs> oh, this is the start of the MCU. It's directed by John Favreau, and this movie is great. I love Iron Man. I'll talk about my negatives first. The villain's pretty weak. He's not Jeff Bridges is not terrible. In fact, I like Jeff Bridges a lot. He's pretty good as uh, Obadiah Stane, but his motivations are pretty mediocre. His the, the third act is. Although it's not bad, it's clearly phoned in. Otherwise, this movie is amazing. Like, this is like some of the best MCU work at their very beginning. Easily the best of the Phase 1 movies, by far. Even though there are some that I like a lot. But Iron Man has some great editing choices to the point that it, it's one of the best show-don't-tell movies I've seen in a while. Like, I, I love this movie. Like, it's a great start to a great series, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Next up is The Incredible Hulk, which is uh, not good. It's a mediocre monster movie, and there's nothing else I can say about it. Next, Punisher Warzone. Ooh, Punisher Warzone. This is one of my favorite bad movies of all time. I know what you're thinking. Really? This random Punisher movie is one of your favorite bad movies? You have to see this movie. It's batshit. Uh, my 4 out of 10 is because of ironic enjoyment. If there wasn't any of that, I'd give it like a 2 or a 1. Honestly, this is like, I'm not even, but this is not even the worst Marvel movie ever because it's so bad, it's amazing. This is like the room or Plan 9 from Outer Space levels of funny. Like, I'm just going to play this scene. I'll take care of this guy. Oh, no, brother. Fatso's mine. Of course. I'm gonna get my applesauce back. Did you know kidneys and applesauce are a delicacy in Sweden? Did you know that? 
yummy, yummy, yummy in my tummy, tummy, tummy. Yeah. That being said, the, the action is also amazing. Like, this is unironically and ironically really good action. Uh, it's got a huge tonal problem. There's a lot of horror elements to it. Uh, but this movie's crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. They did not even try to make a good movie. But they made an entertaining one. So I'm going to be generous and give this a 4 out of 10. Mostly for ironic enjoyment. Oh boy. X-Men Origins Wolverine, in my opinion, is just run-of-the-mill bad. But it's not, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. In fact, I would actually give it a higher score if it wasn't for the horrible, horrible visual effects, even for the time, and what they do to Deadpool. What the fuck were you guys thinking? I don't care that much about Deadpool, although I like the newer movies, which I will get to eventually. I don't think he's a bad character, but they, they fucked him up in this one big time. And they also kind of fucked up Wolverine's backstory, too, and I don't mean comic accuracy. I mean, they hint at a lot of stuff in the previous X-Men movies, like X-Men 2 and all that, with Brian Cox as, uh, what's his name, Dr. Stryker? William Stryker? Yeah. And one, they cast a pretty bland actor, Danny Houston, who I don't like that much, as him. And two, it's not as exciting as you would think with the hints at his backstory. It's just kind of boring. Uh, the action is fun, but it's extremely over the top. Overall, I'm giving a low 3 out of 10, much like all the other bad ones, but the thing is, I know I give a lot of 3s, but the thing is, this one's just run-of-the-mill bad in my opinion. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. So that's all I have to say. See you eventually when I talk about X-Men First Class through Spider-Man Far From Home. See you next time.